yesterday I uploaded a video, um, quite a long one, about um, Yarka pastels on fabric. And I was so pleased with the way the pastels worked and disappointed with the sauce. This is Yarka sauce. And of course, um, because all I was left with was more or less the carbon, the charcoal, when I washed that one tree piece, um, that bothered me. So I want to still be able to take the sauce to fabric if possible. Here's one of my little note card pieces. But yesterday when I was sewing these, what I may do with these is make them into miniature quilts. So um, even though, and by the way, I did find that Dick Blick does still carry, um, or they got them back, the 4x6 Aqua B de Deluxe sketchbooks. So this is my sketchbook size paper, but this is muslin. So two things I probably did wrong with the sauce the other day. One, I used a cotton that is not dyed, but printed, which is going to put a finish on the fabric. <coughs> Excuse me. So today, um, I'm using muslin, which is, um, I think, more absorbent and a better surface anyway. And if you look at the tones of sauce, what that most reminds me of is black and white pen and ink and where the um, different shades come in would actually be equal to how um, much cross hatching or stippling is in pen and ink. So this may end up being a miniature quilt which is why we're still at the kitchen sewing table and I used one of these to draw a star because a star is a theme through many quilts um, and then I used this one which is not the darkest black to just put a, a very simple grid in around it because what that then looks like is the fabric I was using a star unwoven fabric so that kind of opens the mind where you can take small pieces of fabric, this is 4 by 6 and draw this very simply. Um, I may put some shading in, and then um, put a backing and a piece of batting and make a miniature quilt. This size, 4 by 6 is perfect for a 112 scale doll. And you can fill your miniature doll house with quilts. So what I'm going to do is decide whether I fill this in a little bit more or what I do with it and then I'm going to put it through the same process that I had with the other fabric and the other uh, tree design and see if it washes out. Okay so you can see I've used one of the neutral tones to cross hatch um, around the edges of the star and then I put white in the center to make it look three-dimensional. And this is um, so built up, it's actually um, piling up on the fabric, which is fine. That's what happened with the pastels on the pair. So I'm going to leave it like this, and I'm going to go throw it in the wash, and I'm going to see if the same thing happens where the lighter colors fall off. Now, I'm not all that surprised if that happens because um, with crayons, if you do a drawing in wax crayon, when you heat set it by ironing it while it's pressed face down on a brown paper bag, most of the time the white will just disappear to nothing. So then you have to use like bright blues or an orange or something else to highlight. So this is um, the goal of getting, I mean, if I make a miniature quilt for my doll out of this, this will look to me, if these colors remain, this will remind me of an old Civil War quilt. 
um, a little bit brown, a little bit black, a little bit beige, um, American with the star. You could do 50 of these and make a wall quilt. You see, this is why I'm saying that to save a tree and to use fabric whenever we can, it actually opens up a lot of possibilities for new design ideas. And if you think of the sauce crayons as um, closer to a black and white pen and ink, um, then I think you'll have an easier time with coming up with designs. So I will put this through the same process of washing it in hot soapy water. I again ex um, expect almost everything would fall off of there except for my darker grid lines. Um, but if enough remains there where I have a quilt outline, I then hand quilt in the same colors that I've used. So I do hatch lines in brown or sepia um, thread, you know, just or directional lines, and, and then do a grayish blue outline for the star. I can take my design, I don't have to worry that it may not be professional art level, and I can still use sauce on muslin and make it be a design for a quilt or um, clothing. One of uh, my vest patterns is making a vest out of patchwork pieces. So I could, I could make, I need 25 for the front and the, and the back and the side flap. So I could make 75 of these and make a vest and then hand quilt each one. It's still the kitchen sewing table. Now, while that's in the wash, and um, I have to mention, it's actually in, I keep little um, cans, you know, like from big um, hams or any kind of um, tin can that I can reuse. I keep them in the kitchen to wash little things so I'm not like running the washer or even running the bathtub water for a long time. So I have the block I just showed over there in in the sink washing and this is what you would need to make um, a doll quilt you need so you need your initial muslin fabric four by six you would need the sauce crayons which are fourteen dollars I think at Dick Blick um, now this is where the sketchbook comes in I have done basically the same design on paper now. I'm going to give it a name and this sketchbook becomes a record of my quilt blocks. And I can make these for my Heidi Ott four and a half inch teenager doll. Um, she has a bed. I'll get the bed out in a minute and, and you'll see. You can um, take this whole idea, make miniature quilts and you don't have to use a Heidi Ott expensive doll there are inexpensive 112 scale dolls um, if you have boys or you're a guy you can use um, the newer more modern GI Joes are about four and a half inches if you have kids you can use Gumby this can be a Gumby quilt you can um, bring in the idea of sewing um, on a miniature scale. You can find many characters. Winnie the Pooh, I have a, um, a two inch tall Winnie the Pooh that goes with the dollhouse. Um, I could even take this smaller if I wanted to and make a very tiny Winnie the Pooh blanket. So you can um, Become a designer is what I'm saying. Somebody asked me about these fabrics and I was doing some research on why they shrunk like that and um, I came across, it's called Liberty Gatherings by Primitive Gatherings by Moda. Beautiful line of fabric and I actually have 
um, about seven yards of, I didn't know the name at the time when I bought the fabric, I have about seven yards of one of their fabrics that I'm going to be using for veterans quilts. And um, they just have these beautiful, simple, classic patterns in that collection. And I was going to buy a couple of, of, but it's like $12 a yard. And because I'm working four by six, that's too much fabric. What I can do instead now is go, and I'm not stealing anyone else's art because I'm an artist. I understand copyrights. But one of their um, designs is called Tallow on something. And um, one of my fabrics is called Tallow. They have like five different Tallow designs in different colors. Um, well, I can make something similar and make a quilt block out of it, make my own design. And that is the sharing of ideas and the sharing of colors and the sharing of effects and not a carbon copy of whatever they've done. So they had several um, star fabrics. The one that I have is actually a blue and white, like gingham, with red stars on it. So this is not like the fabric I own, but it's an idea of it. So I'm not really copying their fabric. I'm using the star, and I'm going in my own direction. Now, 4 by 6 instead of a square, um, in my case, represents the flag. The flag is a rectangle. Um, but you can do rectangle quilts or rectangle patchwork. Um, but in this case, I think I'm going to be doing miniature quilts. At one point, I had said I was going to make a miniature of every quilt I had made, which I'd be looking at 50 or 60 um, quilts that I'd have to do in miniature. What I may do instead, instead of redoing what I've already done, is make new designs at this scale. So 4 by 6 muslin. This is the... Um, I'm using this because I have a ton of it. Um, this is cotton roving, uh, Carolina cotton, pharmaceutical cotton, but you can use cotton or polyester batting. In fact, I have uh, probably a lot of uh, polyester batting. I also have wool that I haven't spun yet, and this could be, you could make it a wool blanket. That would really make it like the Civil War. Um, a fabric backing of some kind, and um, when that block comes out of the wash, and I put that on top, you can also bring in machine quilting and machine quilt the edges of the star. So, but to make a doll quilt, four by six muslin, um, four by six backing, and um, some kind of batting, you can either hand quilt it, machine quilt it. I used the automatic zigzagger on the edges. You can make it a little rag quilt. Um, this is two pieces stitched together. I could just draw a design and hand quilt it with no batting because the dolls don't get cold, but don't tell them. Um, you can use scraps and crayons or sauce and limited materials to simply make um, a doll quilt and then you're still quilting you're still sewing but it's not you know eight yards of fabric for a twin size quilt or something like that and you can enjoy all the different aspects of sewing in miniature so when I get that block out of the wash and let it dry we'll see how it compares with the original design Now today's guest isn't a machine, is Bob Hope. I just mentioned if you have boys or you're a man, you can use uh, G.I. Joe's for the small scale. You can also do this a little bit bigger with, say, a 8-inch um, wide by 10-inch quilt. And this is Bob Hope. 
I have wanted this. Um, this is a Hasbro G.I. Joe Classic Collection, Bob Hope and the USO. I have wanted this guy for a long time. And I also have a G.I. Joe 82nd Airborne Classic Female. And I have a vintage Major Flint G.I. Joe. When my son grew up and left me, left me his G.I. Joe as I grabbed him. Um, but anyway, this is Bob Hope. And Bob Hope is the epitome of putting a smile on your face and keeping it there. Whether you're in the service or not in the service. So these are now at this scale, which is 4x6. I'm pretty sure an 8x10. Um, and you make Bob Hope some kind of an army bunk. And you make an 8x10 quilt for Bob Hope. And then Bob Hope gets the comfort just like he got the laughs. Use your imagination and create good. It's fun. Now this is a little bit of additional. Um, this is a like a teen size 112 scale bed and you would have to purchase pillows. Um, I have just a folded piece, a couple of them, bandana fabrics for like bed pads. Um, but what I also did, and the instructions aren't here for this, I knitted like a, a mattress. And then these are weave it squares that are blankets. So um, working small is good in a lot of ways. It's not a big, huge project. Um, it's basically uh, scrap materials for the most part. And I'm going to leave her doll stand on for a second. But you can see she fits in the bed. And then if you, I didn't get the square out of the wash yet. But this is basically how that quilt is going to fit the bed. And once it's made, it'll go right down over there. And then I may fold it over um, and make one edge or something. We'll see. You can use your imagination. Um, now, a Gumby figure, a, G, a small G.I. Joe would probably fit in this bed, but a Gumby figure, you would need a bigger bed, or um, if you buy socks, three to a package, they often come in a, card, a nice cardboard box that holds three pair of rolled up socks. It's the perfect size for some dolls that are about seven inches tall, six and a half, um, so you can use your imagination with boxes too and paint them or decorate them make them some kind of a trundle bed by putting another piece of cardboard in there you can make a miniature which you then use your quilt designs to make miniature quilts and keep a record of your sewing that way without having I have 12 um, six, eighteen. I have about twenty Rubbermaid or um, Sterlite bins with quilts in them. And if you do it in miniature, you end up with a stack instead of, you know, twenty Sterlite boxes. Um, so this is what we're doing this for now. In the future, I've gotten this together, but I didn't write it up yet. This is another quilt pattern for a doll. Isn't that cute? Very simple to do, especially model 20s, um, handheld stitchers, hand sewing. You don't need a big machine. So this is um, a true patchwork quilt. But I haven't written up the pattern yet, so that one will come later. And today, we're doing a Civil War American quilt block. Now I mentioned copying fabric. Um, this is the fabric I'm talking about and that design 
is going to be, you know, coming off of an idea of this fabric. And this is going to be the backing, uh, probably for wall quilts for veterans. Um, and here's our doll, and that's my Coco Puppet, who sleeps on the bed. Um, I saw this fabric at Lib uh, Liberty Gatherings by Primitive Gatherings for Moda, and yet this has a number and www.emmamila.com, all rights reserved. Two designers doing the exact same thing. So I don't think anybody's going to get upset if I then take that to this and make a bed quilt out of it. I'm surprised um, because they've got all rights reserved means they've copyrighted this design. And yet the same design is done by somebody else. So... Um, Check the copyrights. If you buy a yard of fabric and a yard of muslin and you make yourself a nice wall quilt or a window panel, um, there's the window panel over there that I had made. That's one of them. Um, and then to preserve your work and your idea of work, you can use any kind of a notebook, make a sketch of it, and then work it up in miniature. And you have a block that is reminiscent of the quilt you made. So that's what we're doing today at the kitchen sewing table. Okay, there's the square. Excuse me for a moment, the dog is barking. Okay, it's just dogs talking to each other. It happens all the time. There's a dog out front talking to her, and she's answering. Stop. Stop. I'm sorry for the interruption. There is a lot more color left on this one than there was on a finished cotton fabric. A lot more color left. Um, there it is on paper, and there it is on fabric. And the white actually shows up more on the fabric than it does on the paper. So, I think this is going to work. Now, this is still damp, so I'm going to let it um, dry. And um, this is going to be a quilt for this doll. I'm going to let it dry. Now, when I go to put this together... Um, the 1588 as a hand crank um, is set up on the table right now. What I'm going to do first is go around the outline by machine and get the star in there by machine. But this is a beautiful um, brown green hand quilting thread I found. Vintage uh, thread that came with another thread purchase. So that would do all of this brownish on the edges of the star, and probably by hand. You can't use um, a hand quilting thread in a machine. You can buy machine embroidery thread in that color if you want to do it like that, if you want to do machine embroidery. This is such a little piece. That would be a, almost a joy to do. Um, you can use polyester batting. So this is two layers of muslin. You only really need to use one. Um, I have the a different fabric on the back. And once I get, I'm going to machine quilt the edges of the star. And that means I don't have to pin it after that point. And then I can um, use either machine quilting or hand quilting to finish this. And I'm going to give it a title, probably Civil War Star, and the date. And it becomes a quilt block. That then, even if I decide, well, um, four-inch squares are better than rectangles, then all I'd be losing in the design is extra grid fabric. And I would just um, 
center the star on, on a square. And by using tracing paper and a regular pencil, you can trace your design, flip the tracing paper over, and mark the same design on the back with graphite, flip the tracing paper over again, and go over it again on the front side with pencil, and you will leave a pencil mark on wherever you're doing it. Um, I would suggest you do that on a piece of cardboard and then cut out a cardboard template to make multiple blocks. And all of this comes from a problem with sauce. Plans I already had for making miniature quilts and finding out that muslin is really a better fabric to use for sauce crayons than any kind of a printed finished fabric. So you can do it too. Miniature doll quilts, 4x6, 8x10 for Bob Hope, G.I. Joe, or Barbie sized dolls, and um, keeping a record in the same colors of, um, of your designs. Okay, we're going to use the 1588 after all, and um, here is, this is still a little bit damp, here is the block, and I have it um, pinned, and I, you know, this cotton roving is very thick, so the 1588 won't have a problem going through that, but what I want to talk about, um, this is where the automatic zigzagger can come in with your quilting. And let me move the camera so you can see this. This is um, the blue thread I want to do the outline. Maybe the contrast is better over here. Um, I want to do the outline in blue of the star. I put in another of the yellow zigzag cams. Um, but yesterday when I was doing a border, I had it quite wide because I wanted the border wide. And if you've ever wondered why Singer, um, the bite, B-I-G-T-H, on the um, automatic zigzagger can go very narrow, um, this is perfect for miniature sewing. So there is their widest, which was the border, and now we have a tiny little bite. And you want to do this on a scrap piece of fabric before you do your actual block and this is technically even though it's a zigzagger um, machine embroidery so I wanted the star to have that electric star element and the cam that I picked out is um, three-step. This is the three-step cam, which basically goes um, up at an angle and then back down and then up at an angle. So we will put those away. Now, <clears throat> it's a good thing that this is a hand crank because the fabric is wet and no power motor to deal with. I have the stitch length set at about 25 stitches per inch and the bite on the zigzagger is not the narrowest it can go, it's um, a little bit wider than the middle, but I think it will fit this design. Now this is where, when I just did that test this moved through um, fine. But this is where the guiding the fabric, even though it's a small piece, especially with a hand crank, comes in. I'll have to excuse my hands for a minute. I'll just stop it there. Um, pull 
one out and show you how beautiful this is going to be. This is going to be beautiful. Look at that. That is going to be beautiful. So this will now become the prettiest little miniature bed quilt I've made. Once I get the star complete, and then I pick out a color to go over the grid lines with a zigzag pattern, and then, uh, depending on what I decide to do with the shading of the star, look at that. From Yarka sauce to wonderful. Almost like a hand embroidered hanky, only better. A miniature doll quilt. Now I left this part uh, to last to, to do and to show you. So here's what I did. Um, I had the black or dark blue grid lines. I went over them with yellow. When this block goes in a washer, there's a chance that some of that's going to come off anyway. So I put in the color I wanted just to suggest um, fabric around the star. I love the effect of the zigzagger on the star outline itself, but I only used um, the zigzagger on the one main design element in the block. Um, the border is a different stitch, but the block itself is the star and the grid, and then the shading of the star. And so only the star outline has the zigzagging. Now this is how I'm doing the shading. It's in a similar color. It's like a light mink brown, but you can see that once you start to put lines in, it actually looks darker than the thread color. And that's what I want to show you is um, when you draw this in chalk, you have a solid effect. When you stitch it, no matter how you stitch it, you're not going to have that solid effect. And so if you're designing blocks or designing um, quilts or um, cards, anything you're designing for gifts for people, you have to be aware that it's going to look a lot different than it looks on paper. So straight stitch only on this. I did not lower the feed dogs. I'm not using a hoop. I left the shading of the star last um, because the whole piece is secured. In the background, I went around the outside edge with the yellow straight stitch. So now what I'm doing is really just finishing the points of the star where I had the brown before. And not fancy. There is a rule in cross hatching where you go in three directions generally diagonally this way, um, diagonally that way, and then vertically. Um, so as long as you're following one of those three directions, any shading in straight stitch will look fine. So this is a doll quilt. It can also be um, a way to keep your ideas, as I said, for your quilt squares. It can also be a note card. It can also be word art if you add calligraphy or um, ink in another way. Um, it, it's a way to... Uh, the main purpose for me today is being able to fit the sauce crayons and working on fabric into something I was going to do anyway, which is the miniature doll quilts. So um, with the Yarka pastels, charcoal... Um, the chalkier type um, art products, I think those are um, wonderfully suited for working out a design on muslin. And so now my doll quilt projects have begun. <laughs>